Hey guys, Mr. Dobrins here. This is going to be the first video in the series that talks about the Shark HD 510 CNC routers. And what's really neat about these is we have not just one, but we have three of them. So we're going to have a lot of time on the machine, a lot of cut time for every individual student. The idea here is every time you go and you create, you write your G-code project or later down the road, you create your CAM project, um, we can come and cut it almost immediately. Uh, that is going to maximize our time on the machine, which is going to give you guys the best opportunity to learn all these skills that we're going to practice. Now, before I talk about each of the parts of the machine, you should have already looked at the diagram that has the arrows pointing out the names of all these different things, because it does matter. If I say grab the pendant and stop the machine or hit the emergency stop, you have to know what the difference between those two parts on and hit the right one. All right, so let's quickly talk about some of the important things here. This black box right here is actually the controller. It's what tells the machine what to do. It's going to interpret the code and tell the motors on the different axes what needs to happen. The red button on there is very important. It's the emergency stop. Anytime I hit this, it's going to stop everything on the machine. It essentially cuts power to the entire machine. So if something's going really wrong, boom, hit it, it's off. This gray box right under the controller is the inverter. What this does is it takes power and it powers the spindle. Now the spindle is this big, let me spin around here so you guys can see it. It's this big silver piece that's right in the middle of all this, uh, um, all these brackets that are holding it in. Uh, it's what, it's essentially just a big motor that spins and we attach a cutting bit to it through the collet, which you can see here on the bottom. And that's how we machine things. All right. On this side, we also have the pendant. The pendant is how we interact with this machine. It's how we load our programs via a thumb drive. It's also how we use the touch plate uh, with a port on the left-hand side. It's how we zero the machine. It's how we do everything. So you getting really familiar with this is a very important thing. This is on a flexible gooseneck, they like to call it. So when we're not using it, it's really good to kind of stick it back here and out of the way so people don't whack it as they walk by. The machine itself has two main parts. It has the bed, which is most notably this big piece of aluminum here on the top. Um, and the second part is the gantry, which is, uh, it comes up the black sides, has this big piece of aluminum on the back. And that is essentially what carries the Z axis, the spindle, the motor, um, the workhorse part of this. Uh, if we look at the orientation of this machine, if I'm standing in front of this, the left to right movement of the machine is my X axis. The Y axis is the gantry moving front to back. And the Z axis is all done on this um, cradle, is what I like to call it, this big uh, cradle that carries the spindle. So it'll move the spindle up and down, we get our Z axis movement. A couple of things we need to point out here are the different lines attached to the Z axis and to the spindle. Number one is this big clear flex hose. This is, uh, I believe, two and a half inch hose. This is how we get all the dust that we're creating from machining all this wood out of there. Um, these machines can make a huge mess if we don't have a way of, of vacuuming out all the dust and chips that we're making. So we have a dust shoe that's attached to the spindle and attached to that is the dust hose. So this goes to a dust collector on the far end and it actually services all three machines. So we need to make sure that when we're actually machining that the gate is open or out and that allows the suction to go all the way to the dust collector. It allows it to work and pick up all the material we're creating. Um, these orange lines are actually coolant lines. This is a liquid cooled spindle. There is a tank underneath the table and it's really hard to tell whether the coolant is flowing. So we have a flow meter here that's uh, bolted to the side of the spindle carriage, and it has a little wheel. We need to double check and triple check and frequently check that that wheel is spinning, indicating there is coolant flow. If we don't have coolant flow, we're gonna burn this motor out and it is a very expensive thing for us to replace. All right, um, on the bottom of the spindle, there is a collet. That's what holds the cutter that we're using. Right now we have a quarter inch uh, bit installed, cutting bit installed. And this is the second part of the dust shoe. This is the lower dust shoe with a, 
which attaches via magnets to the upper dust shoe. Now, the reason this is off is so that I can change bits, so that I can uh, get my Z height from the material I'm gonna be cutting. And the nice thing about it is, is it just pops right on. So once I've uh, uh, done all my settings, I've set my Z, I have my bit in, my offset is figured out. Um, I can just kind of pop this guy right in there. It's pretty simply actually. There we go, it's ready to cut now. And this, these bristles allow me to collect as much of the dust and sawdust and chips that I'm creating as possible without them flying everywhere. So it's really important that we have that on when we're cutting. Um, I believe that is uh, all the major pieces, but one thing I wanna point out is the power strip. Connected to the power strip is this entire machine for the most part. So if it's not turning on, or actually what's more important is that we turn this on in the correct order, which will be covered in another video, but pushed in for the emergency stop, make sure that's off. That rocker switch turns on the power to the uh, unit, but as you can see, nothing's turning on right now. Um, the order of how we start this machine up will be covered in a subsequent video. Be sure that you watch them all so you know exactly how to run this machine before we actually do it.